Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Amar and on this channel we focus on tech reviews and filmmaking tutorials. So if any of that interests you, smash that subscribe button and let's grow together. But without any further ado, in this video, we're gonna be talking about the M1 MacBook Pro, more specifically my experiences after seven months of intensive daily use. Let's get into it. I've been using the M1 MacBook Pro for around seven months now. I purchased it new from Apple and it's really been my daily driver since I first bought it. It's not the base model. I do have it slightly upgraded with one terabyte of storage and 16 gigabytes of memory. So really you'd expect it to perform better than the stock and baseline MacBook Pros. On the whole, this laptop has served me pretty well if I'm honest. Like I mentioned, I do use it as my daily driver. About 90% of the time I've got it connected to that monitor back there and it's in sort of a desktop configuration. I've got a magic mouse, magic keyboard, magic track, bad and about 10% of the time I'll go out to cafes or I'm out and about in the house and I'm using it in that setting. In terms of what I actually get up to on the laptop on a day-to-day -day basis, it really varies, but it's gonna be split for me between heavy editing in Final Cut Pro, that's video editing, also some photo editing, light admin tasks, and just day-to-day -day browsing and social media stuff. If there's anything that needs to be done on an actual computer, I'll be doing it on this laptop. I do have a gaming PC upstairs, but after a year, even though I spent a fortune on that thing, it's just really slow and it takes forever to load up. And honestly, I really prefer the Mac workflow compared to Windows but that's another video for another time. So having owned and used the M1 MacBook Pro for a while now, I have to say that I've noticed this sort of disparity between what all these you know, huge tech channels and influencers say about this laptop and then what my humble experience is. And you can associate this, I guess, to a number of things. You know, it could be that at the size of their channels, they're collaborating directly with Apple and they're very limited in terms of the criticisms that they can give of this laptop. It could just be that they haven't had enough exposure to you know, the faults which I've experienced. It could just be that you know, my experience has been as a bad Apple and you know, the vast majority of users out there don't experience what I experience. But nonetheless, I would have really liked to have seen what I'm experiencing now in a YouTube video before I actually purchased the laptop. You know, it cost me a lot of money. It's also going to cost you a lot of money regardless of your budget. I mean, this is a lot of money for a laptop. And although I don't regret purchasing it, despite all the issues which I'm going to go on to explain over the next few minutes, I still would have really loved to have been warned about <laughs> what I'm going to be experiencing because really it does leave you disappointed when you spend that much on a laptop and when every other M1 MacBook Pro review says you know it's the best thing since sliced bread it's the perfect laptop you're not going to experience any hiccups or anything with this laptop and then you get it and you experience this stuff and it can be quite disappointing so me being a very small channel, I'm not tied to anyone here. I do have another channel where I'm tied to skateboard companies, but you know, that's completely separate. So I can bring you guys honest, genuine feedback and hopefully it benefits you and informs your purchase decision. And if I can help even one person make better decision with their money, then as far as I'm concerned, that's a big win for me. But let's now get into some of my negative experiences with this laptop. There have been occasions where my mouse cursor lags on the screen and whilst this does happen quite rarely it is incredibly frustrating when it does happen and before you assume that this is a bluetooth connection thing because i'm using a mouse and a trackpad it also happens with the inbuilt trackpad on the laptop itself so guys as you can see i'm using the magic mouse with my m1 MacBook pro and you can see that the mouse is still can be choppy sometimes that's me going left and right. It's just very choppy. There was also one occasion where I was editing a 4K video and I just wanted to stabilize a very short clip. But the minute I clicked stabilize, the fans on the laptop started roaring like an engine was about to take off. And the whole underside of the laptop got super warm. Take a look. So all I did was stabilize this clip here that's only a few seconds long. Stabilization as you can see there and it's loading there but you can hear the fans roaring so 
Sticking with editing, one time I was editing with a 3D plugin and Final Cut Pro just completely crashed on me. And it kept crashing over and over anytime I would do as much as hover my cursor over that clip. At the time, I was really scared that I would lose a project that I'd spent over 10 hours working on. This is what happens when you edit in Final Cut Pro in 3D space. Ready? Check this out. Scrolling over. Shut down. There's even been a couple of times where my M1 MacBook Pro just completely shut down on me and restarted in the middle of my work. Luckily, all the changes I was making were somehow saved, and that's just a really good thing about Mac OS, but this simply should not be happening when you spend as much as I spent on this laptop, and given all the raging reviews about the M1 MacBook Pro online. Apple themselves boast about how phenomenal the real world performance of this laptop is. And don't get me wrong, this laptop is incredibly smooth and fast when performing day-to-day -day tasks, and the battery life on it is also very impressive. But the main reason I purchased this laptop was for high intensity usage. For instance, video editing, photo editing, multiple tasks going on at the same time, downloading 4K videos, uploading 4K videos, that sort of stuff. Apple and all the big tech YouTubers were raving on about the M1 chip and how it boasts three and a half times better CPU performance and five times better graphics performance. Five times. If it's really five times better, why am I experiencing all these issues with intensive use, especially with video editing? And also especially with uh, a video editing program like Final Cut Pro, which is native and made by Apple to work with this machine. I'm not using Adobe Premiere, for example, or After Effects or anything. Final Cut Pro is meant to be integrated to work with the M1 chip. And by the way, it's worth adding that I very rarely faced any of these issues with my old MacBook Pro, which was from 2015 and which was the base model. So part of me does feel that I've been taken in by all the marketing by Apple and also all the experiences of the big tech YouTubers because honestly, I never saw any of them discuss any of the issues which I faced and I watched a lot of reviews before buying the M1 MacBook Pro because these things are not cheap. So if you enjoyed my brutal honesty in this video and it's helped you make an informed decision on whether you wanna get one or not, then drop a like on this video and also smash that subscribe button. I do hope to share more honest and valuable tech reviews on this channel as time goes on. But yeah, I mean, I don't regret purchasing this laptop. It was definitely an upgrade from my old laptop. It has served me well over time. I just wish it wasn't so heavily overplayed to me. And you know, then I wouldn't be disappointed with these issues which I'm facing, I would have expected them. That about does it for this one guys. If you enjoyed, smash that like button. I would really appreciate it. Also subscribe if you're new and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.